So just uh, to begin the trial lesson, uh, some rules for online class. So normally students have textbooks. Don't worry, you don't need the textbook today, but come to class ready to learn. This means having pencil, paper, mute all microphones. This is really important, especially if you are in a house with a lot of people. I don't know about you guys, but uh, social isolation, my house is really, really full right now. I have me, my mother, my father, everybody is working from home. Thankfully, right now they are quiet. But if you have a lot of background noise, please mute this. Uh, avoid speaking over others. Use proper writing structures and participation is required. So I know maybe you're a little nervous today, but I wanna have some fun. It's Saturday, we have a fun lesson planned. So I want everybody to uh, turn on their microphones when we're doing the speaking activity. All right, so the first topic for today, bragging about your hometown. So I have a question. What does it mean, bragging? Anyone familiar with this word? I see some faces like this, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. So bragging is when you talk a lot about your achievements or your possessions. This is bragging. So right now we are joining each other from all over the world. So I wanna know about your hometown, three things that make your hometown special. So we're talking about a lot of the things that your hometown has. Another word for bragging is boasting. So these are common words in advance. You can brag about something or you can boast about something. And boasting or bragging means to talk a lot about it. So if I tell you guys, I'm like, oh my God, um, I have AirPods and I am so rich and uh, uh, I'm just like really popular and here's me with my AirPods. This is an example of bragging. So what do we think, negative or positive? Now I need your microphones on, bragging. Is this a negative adjective or positive? Oh, but not everybody, just some people. It depends. <laughs> it depends, okay. I, why do students in advance love this word? They always say, depends. Okay, depends on what? Depends on the subject. Okay, okay. So what's a good subject to brag about? Uh, I would say if you're not bringing people down, if you share them up, like I guess is your... Um, is your intention. Yeah, your intentions, great answer. So for example, I don't know if your parents, usually parents love to brag about their children, or if you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a partner, a husband, or a wife, they love to brag about you and tell everybody all the good things you do. It's very embarrassing. My mother's always like, this is my daughter. She teaches English. And I'm like, mom, stop. So today we're gonna talk about positive bragging about our hometowns. But before we do this, I just wanted to share some things about my hometown. I'm gonna brag right now. So the first thing I'd like to share, three things that make Canada special, the multiculturalism and diversity. So um, uh, I, took, I didn't make this video actually, but this is a video from my online class that one of my students made. I just wanna share it with you just to show how uh, many countries. Jessica first. Okay, I, I don't like my voice. Easter from Canada. Peace. Oh, Mary. Hello, hello. Happy Easter. Easter. So, someone from Iran. Hey, Joachim. Salut. Joyeux Pâques et au revoir. Milena. 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 So my student made this video. This is an example of a typical class that we have. So the multiculturalism and diversity that we have in Canada and for online class and at ILAC is something that makes Toronto awesome. Another thing, uh, in Toronto, we have all four seasons. So as you know, we have fall, winter, currently spring right now, or we have summer. So I wanna share with you, these are two photos that I took of uh, my backyard. So in Canada, sometimes we have more than uh, two seasons, you know, in one week. So the first photo, I took this photo on March 21st, and the second photo on March 23rd, look at this. 
This is typical for Canada, okay? One day beautiful and sunny, boom. The next day we have snow. Another thing that makes Canada special is the entertainment scene. So Toronto is so fun. Obviously right now with coronavirus, you know, we don't have, we don't get to experience some of these things, but in Toronto we have uh, outdoor concerts. This place is my favorite, Budweiser stage, or we have the Raptors. So I don't know if you know or not, do you follow basketball? Anyone? Our team won the last championship. Yeah, go Toronto, go Raptors. So we are undefeated, right? Because technically this year we don't have another game, but not the point. So some other things about Toronto. This, I don't know if you've seen this picture before. It's very famous, the pictures of the big Toronto sign. So this is Nathan Phillips Square. So we have a lot of events here year round. You can see in the winter, you can go skating or there's fireworks for Canada Day or New Year's, a lot of celebrations there. So before you guys start your task, I want to go over some vocabulary. Let me know if you are familiar with these words. So to describe your hometown, we can use words like ancient. I would like your microphones on now. Now I want you to speak to me. This is great pronunciation. You get a free pronunciation course right now. Let me hear you, ancient. 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 Yes. Ancient. Perfect. Ancient. Or Ancient. historical. So this is a word to describe something. Oh, sorry. We have some students joining us. Just let me let them in. Perfect. Nikolai is coming to join us. Ancient. Like Gaza and Egypt. Ancient. Historical. We have the words lively. 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 Vibrant. Lively. 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 Pronunciation. So lively or vibrant, like somewhere in uh, Spain. This me what does it mean, lively? Uh, alive. Alive, full of life. So a place that has a lot of life, has a lot of tourists, a lot of movement. Lively. We also have dull or dull. boring. Dull. dull. These are great words. So technically, I, I'm lying a little bit. I don't live in Toronto, okay? I live in a small town north of Toronto. And my town is very dull and very boring. So an example <laughs> would be a rural area. Rural area. A rural area. Well done. Rural area. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Rural area. Rural area. Or we have the word breathtaking. 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 What do you think it means, breathtaking? Breathtaking. What do you think it means? Yeah. Right in the top. You're dead. You're dead. <laughs> okay, okay. You're dead. Okay. Anyone else? What do you think it breathtaking. means? Breathtaking. 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 This means something is so beautiful, it takes your breath away. Like breathtaking. Wow. Breathtaking. I'm not dead almost. <laughs> but only for a couple of seconds. So if an area is really beautiful, we can say that it is breathtaking. Breathtaking. Like in India. India. We also have bustling. Bustling. Or crowded. Clouded. Crowded or busy. So be careful with this word. A lot of busy. Students, a lot of students make the mistake with crowded. So we have the word crowd. And crowd is just a noun to describe a group of people. But crowded. Crowded. Is the adjective to say the area has a lot of people. So be careful with this. Crowded or busy. An example would be New York. It's bustling, it's crowded, it's busy. Has anyone here ever been to New York? I see Maria's just like this. Angela, yes. So Angela, is it similar to the picture? Are the stereotypes real? It was even busier when I was there. Wow. There's actually a live camera right now. I forget the name of the website, but you can Google uh, New York and see this live right now. It's crazy because it's completely empty compared to this photo. And we also have the words modern or up to date. Up to date. Up to date. So maybe it's trendy. It's... I'm trying to think of another word. Can anyone help me? What's another word for modern? Yeah. Singapore. Today, modern. New. 
Singapore. Singapore, yes. Yeah. What's another word for modern? <laughs> another word, anyone? Something new. Something new, yeah. Perfect. And our last couple words, picturesque. Wow. Picturesque. Or charming. Charming. Charming is my favorite adjective. So, you know Prince Charming? Yeah. Yeah, so Prince Charming, he is a smooth talker. He is very good at getting the ladies. So charming can be an adjective to talk about a place or it could be an adjective to talk about a person. So I love to use this adjective to talk about myself because I'm very charming, Dangerous. right? Charming. 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 Yeah. Perfect. This is in Turkey. And touristy. Touristy. So if it is a touristy place, for example, Toronto is a touristy place. I live in a small town. You can Google this if you would like to see where I live. Uh, it's very small and the name is Cookstown in Ontario. Cookstown. And my, my town is, is not touristy, unfortunately. So my town is very small. There's maybe 1,500 people, 1,500 people. So not very touristy at all. But another example of something that is maybe more touristy would be uh, in Rio de Janeiro. Does anyone know what this is? Rio yeah. de Janeiro. Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, Brazil. 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 Do we have anyone here from Brazil right now? Yeah. Uh, no, Ma, don't worry about it. Next time, next time. Okay, so now you guys are gonna have the opportunity to talk with each other. So when you are talking about your hometown, you're gonna say my hometown is, and the location. Then you're gonna say maybe three things that make it extraordinary or three things that make it amazing. When you are talking about your hometown, try and use the new vocabulary words. So maybe if you have a cell phone right now, you want to take a picture of these words. My hometown. So you can remember them. And I also have some sentence examples. So I know for some of you, maybe this is your first time speaking English uh, in a long time. So some ways to form your sentences. You can say one thing that makes my hometown special is. A second thing, when you visit my hometown, you must see. Or what makes it special. You guys ready? Okay, so right now I'm gonna put you into breakout groups. Just Ooh. give me a second. Okay, so right now you will be transferred to your breakout room with your group. Do you know what you're talking about? Sure. Sure. What are we talking about? <laughs> you have homework. You think this is easy? No, no, no. You guys are students. You're talking about? Our hometowns. Our hometowns. Oh. Bragging about hometown. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this. So bragging about your hometowns. You will be put into your breakout rooms and I will come and visit you, okay? Okay. So you will be in your breakout rooms for about seven minutes and you will get a warning when this is done. All right, guys? Happy speaking. Hello, my lovely breakout room too. So, if, sorry, sorry. If you see at the top, again, it will change your view to a bar. So click the little squares and then it opens it up nice so everybody can come. I have one person who's going to come to our room. We'll get a gentleman to join us, Nikolai. You should so can you, you can add them one by one, right, Jessica? Yep, so we have okay. Nikolai joining us. Nikolai's face is very small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so who do we have? Uh, Maria Radovic. Hello, hello, everyone. How are you? Good, good. Right? All right, so at the top of your screen, remember you see a little bar with everybody's face. Make sure to click the little squares and this opens it up so you can see everybody who's in the conversation. Perfect. Everyone has this? Yep. Cool. Okay, so our hometowns. So we have a student from Japan. We have a student who's in Canada right now. We have a student from Thailand. We have another student who's joining us from Korea. And another student who's joining us from... 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Ema. Can you please remind me where you're joining us from? Spain? Where are you from, Oh, sorry, Barcelona? Barcelona? I think Barcelona, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Ema, maybe having some difficulty with your microphone? Ema, can you hear us? No. Oh, yeah. Yes. Ima, <laughs> Barcelona, right? Yes, I live in Barcelona. Okay, okay. So my I live lively city. <laughs> it's uh, normally it's plenty of people who come to visit it. It's a tourist the place. Touristy. What? You remember the vocabulary word that we learned? It's touristy. Touristy. Yes. Yeah. And it's also very beautiful because we have one of the most emblematic church or cathedral that it's not uh, it's not finished yet and many Japan people Japanese people come to see it. <laughs> and now, what makes Spain so special? Guys, have you ever been to Spain? What? I'm asking everybody else in the group. So has anyone been to Spain before? No. no. Never. No. Never. Okay. So finally we finally get to have our first experience with someone from Spain. So tell us, Ima, what else makes Spain amazing? Yes, because one of the things you can find if you come uh, is not only to see many uh, nice places, you can eat very good food, <laughs> uh, a variety, an extended variety of, of, of meals that are prepared for people. I think it's one of the things we have here. Ah, perfect. Thanks for sharing. So I'll let you guys keep speaking. I'm going to check on the other breakout room. Hi, I'm back. Hi, okay. I'm to open this up. I was actually just talking to Salvini, who was telling us uh, about her experience in Toronto. Dimitri has also been to Toronto before, but he said that he didn't like two things about Toronto. No! Canadian. <laughs> he said this. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. It was just the weather. So, Salvini. Oh. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, would you like to continue about your experience in Toronto? Uh, yeah, I have been there this summer and it was really great. I like it so much. I liked my family. I liked the lessons in ILAC. It was really interesting and it's, it was a great experience. I paid her money to say this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Really? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Great. So uh, I know we're moving so quickly today, but I want to try and do as much as possible. So thank you all for sharing with uh, your breakout rooms. So we have five more minutes left, and I want to make sure you leave here with some cool travel idioms. Idioms are expressions that mean something different than the literal meaning of the word. So the first idiom I have, to jump in with both feet. And I want to hear from top. Top, what do you think this means? Because last time I liked his thing, oh, you're dead, yeah. So I think Top may have something interesting. Like what it means? Yeah, what do you think it means to jump in with both feet? I Turn think it? enjoy the whole thing. Boom, Maria beats you for the punch. Perfect, Maria. So the meaning, to get started enthusiastically. Oh. If you are enthusiastic, this means you are excited, you are keen on something, you have a positive attitude. So we can use this when we start any new experience. You want to jump in with both feet. Both feet. Both and an example feet. in a sentence is, I tried to tell my daughter to wait, but she jumped in with both feet and got married after knowing her husband for just two months. This is not real. Great this example. Not example. <laughs> it's not my example, but we have another idiom. What do you think it means if something is right up your alley? Oh, like in a good way for you? Maria, holy, two for two. <laughs> Maria, have you been studying? Mm. <laughs> So something is perfect for you. STH is Sorry, short form for something. something. So something is perfect for you. It is right up your alley. So I didn't like, this is supposed to say movie, typo. Sorry, don't look, pretend, yes. Uh, I didn't like the movie, but I think it would be right up Sue's alley. So we can put the object in this. She loves romantic movies. 
If something is right up your alley, it's perfect for you. And the last travel idiom I have, to lose track of something. So common. What do you think it means if you lose track? Can't manage something? Sorry? Can't manage something? You can't manage something. Maria, holy. Maria is actually an ILAC teacher in disguise right now. I paid her as well so she could answer all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Maria. So it could be to forget about somebody or something or to misplace somebody or something. You lose track of it. Usually the most common way to use this expression is to say, I lost track of time. I lost track of time. So maybe you're doing a lot of work or you're watching Netflix for eight hours. You look at your phone, it's 12 p.m. You look again, whoa, it's 8 p.m. Oh my God, I lost track of how much time I was watching this show for. So an example, I've lost track of how many times we've traveled to Europe. Maybe we've been so often that I can't remember the exact amount. I lost track of how many times. To lose track of something. You can't remember then. Yes, you can't remember something. So uh, I had this plan, but I think we're going to skip it. We don't have enough time to do this all today, I wish. But I wanted to thank you all. You're all great students. I know it was so quick, so short, but we have 15 <laughs> minutes to do a quick question and answer session. So a Q and A. So after today's lesson, does anybody have any questions? We have maybe some people from ILAC staff or you can ask questions to me. We would love to hear your feedback. Are you frozen or you just don't have questions? <laughs> okay, we don't have questions. We don't have questions. I, I have a question. Perfect. Love it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if if, <laughs> if uh, someone uh, who would like to start the online, online course and they don't know much about English and how, how do they start or how do they listen or understand the teacher? I think Angela wants to answer this question. Angela, sure. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, before you start your official classes, uh, every student takes a Cambridge English placement test. So this is an online Cambridge exam that places your level so that you're studying with students at any at, at your perfect level. So we do have beginner classes and all the way up to advanced like you guys. So even if someone is is has barely any English or is very shy about practicing, the they have we have the right level available for them. Okay. I think the the online class is a little different than face-to-face. -face. We, we, we understand that. Um, we keep the class sizes pretty small so that the students get lots of time to get to know each other, meet, like feel comfortable, um, because any language learning involves taking some risk, right? You have to try oh, okay. a little bit, make some mistakes, learn from your mistakes and, and build confidence. And that's what our teachers are focused on um, in all of our classes, is uh, getting people to speak up and to, uh, to challenge themselves. Mm -hmm. And teachers have to speak slowly as well. <laughs> yes, yes. This is, this is an advanced class. So, so before, uh, you would often be in intermediate levels with different teachers. But I didn't know what level everyone, and I'm Canadian, okay? Yeah. I speak a little fast, all right? <laughs> this is so, your yeah. normal because level? Uh, is this, it your normal level? This is my normal level, yes. I've been teaching this level for maybe uh, almost two years, a year and a half. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so this is level 12 mm -hmm. at, out of 17-ish. And we have, you know, students can start at level one, level two, and we have classes for that level as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. Anyone else have any questions? Perfect. So I know online class can be a little scary. Students are usually at the beginning, they're afraid to turn on their microphone or afraid to turn on their camera. But 
Actually, online class has become so fun. My students right now have their own Zoom class. So students are doing Zoom lessons with each other outside to speak, listen to music, have fun. We have Instagram chat groups that we go into. So I think that because we're in a crazy situation with quarantine, with this social distancing. So honestly, online class, like people want to speak because maybe you're living alone and you don't have anybody to speak to. So it's like a group <laughs> to speak to uh, all the different students from different areas. And it kind of feels, re it's really comfortable, like really cozy to have everybody in there. Cool. I see we're, we're muted. Angela, anyone else? Can we do the high five? Oh yeah, virtual high fives. Fives, everybody. Samantha. <laughs> high five. Virtual high five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Perfect. So if no one has any more questions, Angela, do you want to take it away? Uh, one, one question. Uh, <laughs> Mm, how is your experience online with the people, for instance, in my case, with the difficulty in, in more difficulty in listening than, for instance, in reading and writing? It's okay? Um, in any class, there will be some people who need more practice with certain skills. Some people want to focus on speaking, some people pronunciation, some people listening. And mm -hmm. all of our classes are a balance of all the skills. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more homework given for yeah. individual practice on your individual thing. Because we want online time to be about practicing and interaction. And then offline, you can do the practice exercises. And it's very easy for people to focus on what they want to learn. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, Ima, there's also a textbook. So students get a textbook and a workbook. And they can actually go online and study whatever, like Angela was saying. But you can do listening, mm -hmm. like Cambridge listening practice from the workbook at home. OK. <laughs> time as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Very talkative. Okay, well, Angela, anything else you'd like to add? No? no just uh, thank you. If you guys have more questions that you think of later, you can always contact us at uh, chris at ilac.com, talk to your agent, um, and we can uh, follow up and answer your questions by email. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Thanks so much. Thank you, awesome. This has been a great Saturday. I have zero plans. <laughs> so this is, a, this is the highlight of my day. I have to go to bed. <laughs> okay, good night. Good morning. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's midnight here. <laughs> yeah, it's midnight here. <laughs> How are you awake right now? I go to bed at 9.30. I come to, I'm going to have a shower and go to bed. <laughs> have a nice weekend. It's the weekend. most nice night in Thailand. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice weekend too. Bye. Bye. Bye, Nikolai. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for lesson. Bye. 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 I know. When you say goodbye and you're like, I can't exit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you say goodbye, but you're still walking in the same direction. Yeah. <laughs> How's good it going? Good job, Jessica. You, you rock. I said, good job. You rock. Yeah, good job. Uh, your turn. I'm hanging around to give you some compliments. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have to gently give some people the, <laughs> the nudge.
just really good. I felt so really bad. Really good. That was awesome.